So the machete, the machete Order, I guess, is at Empire. You watch the original trilogy, and then you go on to Return of the Jedi. So, so the original trilogy functions as, as kind of like a flashback. What do you think? Would you show them the machete? Would you show them one to, you know, episode one, two, six? Or would you show them the way you saw them? I wouldn't show them Sith right away. Um, I would probably show them, God, I mean, obviously the kid movie first, episode one first, uh, then the New Hope, and then, you know, obviously Jedi. Uh, Empire Strikes Back gets you sort of ready to get into serious matters, and then you show Sith. Because, you know. You, you almost have like the Quentin Tarantino version of it. <laughs> you know. Yeah, because once you get to Empire Strikes Back, it's like, that's like, Look, I'm your father. It's like, mm, dude, you know, and, and, and the whole bit where, you know, you you don't see Darth Vader's face as he's about to get his uh, his medicine cap put back on, uh, and then you get to see the medicine cap going on for real. So, yeah, that's the order I would do it, Justin. Um, I think there's actual order and theoretical order. I mean, actual order is when I say, okay, son, it's time you're going to see Star Wars. Yeah, I'm going to show him Star Wars. So I'm going to show him the original. I also think it's hard to go back to that. I think that once you see the lightsaber fights of, of Revenge of the Sith, I think it's hard to go back to the original Star Wars and watch that and be as enthused. So I think watching Star Wars for the, for the first time. How about time, the special editions? Are they amp those lit now? That's right. It's, they have like 20 lightsabers going. So the, um, <laughs> um, uh, but the, the, the theoretical coolest order, I like the, the uh, episode four, episode five, which ends with Luke, I am your father. Episode one, episode two, episode three, where then the question is: Is he Darth Vader? Is he Darth Vader? Is he Darth Vader? Is he Darth? You watch all those, and then Jedi wraps up the threads from episode three. So I've always kind of enjoyed that as a concept, but that's I, original trilogy prequel. Trilogy. Okay, what do you think? I don't have any kids, so <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't well, really do a friend. He's yeah. never I, seen. I don't, it. I don't, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have stuff. strong feelings on it, okay. honestly, but I don't see any. any reason not to watch them in the order I watched them in. Yeah, I mean, I think like Justin said, you have the, the, the original trilogy first and then the, uh, the prequels. And then I like Justin's order too, except you you um, take out episode one and just watch it afterwards. It's kind of like a flashback or something. Yeah. Have you seen, uh, have any of you seen the Topher Grace cut? The Yeah. Or, or the similar ones, the ones that, anybody seen those? You assume. So, so basically what they did, this isn't really a question, I guess, if you don't know about it, but basically what they did was they just cut Phantom Menace out and smashed the other two. It starts with the lightsaber battle, and they just kind of start media res. It's, it's interesting. It's, I can't stand out that much. I've also seen a 20 minute shorter version of the Phantom Menace that is that is infinitely better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what is the, it, the Phantom Menace? Phantom, Phantom Menace, and it's, it, it, the pace, a lot of the pacing is fixed, the, the the jokes that don't work, you know. They, in Star Wars, say what you will about Jar Jar, I like that he's there now that I have a kid. Right. Um, if you just take out a couple of the cringe-worthy moments, you know, step, stepping in poop, that doesn't belong in Star Wars. <laughs> like no one can say Star Wars is about stepping in poop. That's what. That's why I. Can well, the special do. editions. Yes, <laughs> no, that's it's just all they added. Was stepping in poop. Yeah, stepping in poop. Stepping in poop. Stepping in poop. Um, Go ahead, go ahead. For those of us who grew up watching um, episodes, you grew up with five, uh, with four, five, and six. Is it possible that we could, that there would have been an episode one that would have satisfied us? Because I always, I know I always had imagined what the Clone Wars were like. I had always imagined how they got together. Uh, and I, I just wonder if my, uh, our, our expectations could have never actually been. I remember I always said Braveheart with lightsabers. That's what I was expecting, but it didn't really get that. Not that that would be that great. Though. Um, that's basically what I've always felt. That, like I said, I grew up with four, five, and six. By the time I got to Return of the Jedi, I was like Ewoks. God, Ewoks. They were supposed to be Wookies, right? Is that what's? I thought it was supposed to be Wookies. And so by the time, again, when it turns back around to episode one, I was like, okay, this really makes up for how disappointed I was with Return of the Jedi. That's really interesting. Yeah. Anybody else? Um, uh, speak uh, up. Yeah. So, so disappointed. Um, 
is not hard to watch them in. I always thought the most interesting to watch it in is four, five, six through get, six up through get off. Then you flash back to three, or once if you really need to, and then finally you watch the end of Jedi as the final part. Okay, I see. So it's kind of like Machete, but you don't watch all yeah. of them. I was one of the few people that actually liked the special edition version of Return of the Jedi. Because I liked how they I, fixed things. They, I, there was somehow well, they fixed stuff. I felt that. There was a part of me that I had seen those other movies so many times mm -hmm. that I just sort of went for the goofy little, you know, thing. Yeah, it was know? like something. It, was I, it didn't bother. Yeah, they didn't bother me as really much as other people. They just were, you know, I was, I was in the camp. Just released the originals, but I can watch them. The ET special edition. No. Yeah. <laughs> I like watching um, Let's see. Uh, well, here's another issue I had, and we're kind of rounding down, but this, this is a small issue. The one thing that I noticed they did in the, in the prequels in general, they started to add modern elements to the prequels, and that really bothered me. Did, I never really noticed such it. Such as? Such as the diner. That was really close. Yeah. But also in the podcast, just the two announcers, like, hey, how's it going there? Yeah. Here we are today. It's like, what was he thinking? I, mean, I don't care what galaxy you're from, that's gotta hurt. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> that, that might speak to me. He should have gotten a different writer. And then I said, yeah, let's go light on that or something. Uh, anyway. right, that's a fair point, but that's, you know, and I'll give that credit. That's the point that never really comes up against the Panama, so I give it a lot of credit. I'm going to take the prize. No, I <laughs> I'm trying to determine, because the performance that Han Solo gives is the performance that a modern day, I mean, because you're right, it, it is more, you're right, you're right. It is more overblown. He's, he's the modern in, guy. He, it is more overblown in episode one, but Han Solo was the Humphrey Bogart, and he was really, he was really, uh, supposed to, I felt that Han Solo represented us, just normal people going to the forest. Are you crazy? That's yeah, ridiculous, yeah. you know. Yeah, right. But it is more pronounced in episode one. Was the watch this is Guy Cogenero! Yay! Yeah. Especially when they, the fact that they were going back in the past. And I mean, it doesn't make sense because it's, a, you know. But um, So bringing this kind of a little bit full circle, because we're almost at the end here. I, I thought, um, well, here's here's one thing back in the day. I, I always felt that the the Phantom Menace was kind of, and you alluded to it, the Matrix and Lord, the Lord of the Rings trilogy sort of stole its thunder. It's sort of, I think Lord of the Rings kind of came in there and said, we're the cool trilogy now, you know, like us. How do you think, I mean, not to really compare, because you can like both. Um, what do you think? Did, did the Lord of the Rings steal its thunder? Did the Matrix steal its thunder? I don't think the I mean the, I think the Matrix the, the first one did steal a little bit of its thunder for sure with the effects and so that, and Matrix won the Academy Award that year right yes. I, yeah I think it did yeah. Um, but yeah I mean and that, and absolutely I was, I've thought of oftentimes like you know like if they would have done a Lord of the Rings type thing for the prequels you know how much better it would have been but yeah I think the Lord of the Rings kind of came in there and kind of proved the thing but then you know again the Hobbit. Right, history pieces. So you know, it was kind of, you know, I mean, not, not, you know, I, I like those films, but there was definitely a little bit of that pre, the, the prequel trilogy feeling to those films, you know, it was, it was like, I just, if it already, had, we've already been here, and, you know. If they had let, I mean, or I don't know what happened with Yorma Totoro, but if his sensibilities had been placed on it somehow, it would have, because, you know, you, you got the, the, the extra, here we go, we're talking about something in movie, but when you got that added, I'm Peter Jackson, I just did this. How do you, you know, I don't even know how you can talk to yourself, because you just got the Academy Award for everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I do feel the same way, Just because we're running out of time, I'm gonna throw the last question out there. Do you think J.J. Abrams, uh, does it bother you that he sort of is ignoring the original trilogy, or maybe he isn't? Maybe, do you think he's gonna ignore it? Do you think there's not enough lens players in the original? No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The prequels, uh, the prequel trilogy. Do you think? Do you think he's ignoring it? it? It seems to me he's kind of playing it political and pretending they don't exist. Is that just me, or? Is it... I mean, it seems like it's been mandated. Like yeah. it seems. It seems. I mean, it seems like it's come from Kathleen Kennedy more than anything. But it's interesting that that um, I read uh, Tarkin, the the first book for grown-ups that came out. And I was like ready for okay. They've gotten rid of that. They've gotten rid of the expanded universe. That it's now legends. They've done all this. I'm ready for this book. That's going to just crap all over the, the the prequels. And I read Tarkin. I'm like, 
This is all about the prequels. Like, the prequels are a huge part of the very first official release um, from Lucasfilm post- oh, like, Of, of the, the new can. Of the new can, yeah, 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 and, yeah. It's, and it's really prequel heavy. So, but, what, it, but, it, but it's that period, you know what I mean? Like, Tarkin's story ends at you know, New Hope, so it kind of has to be in the sure. prequel. And I, and I think the, the Tarkin stuff is so much more, is actually a lot more interesting. Yeah. Than what actually you know than the prequel like all that backstory is a lot better than what ended up in the prequels. I just hope I just you know I I if they give me lip service, that's fine. That's that's all I want. If they if they're like look they did happen we're acknowledging them mm -hmm. you know at hope, some point I hope I see Obi Wan Kenobi's ghost and it's Ewan McGregor like that would be enough for me to go okay we're not we're not you know giving them the middle finger even if though but that's not where we're going. And I'd be, I'd be fine. I, I agree with something John said not so long ago, which is it just feels kind of sad to see Star Wars without George Lucas. You know, he's yeah. been like he's been kicked out of it. And yeah, well, he, he yeah he he kind of kicked himself out. He was just tired of I think the. Oh my god! Well, you know, he said Even though he just kind of destroyed all his ideas. Somebody it's approached him and said, "Would you ever make another Star Wars movie?" It's a few years so ago, and he said, "Absolutely not. not. Why would I? Every time I do it, so everyone tells me what a bad person I am." Yeah, that was yeah. exact quote. Yeah, and so yeah, yeah. there are just. I mean, I, I, I buy, I collect a lot of Star Wars crap, and it is, it's, it's you no. Know, I mean, I think Disney's a great company to end up at, but there is some a little sadness to seeing that Disney logo on the toys. Right, you never get it. Yeah. It's like, you always had like this connection to George, like, if you guys this and some of the money's going to George. You, know, you're really, <laughs> you need to see the movie People vs. George Lucas if you haven't seen that documentary. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, and, the, and it, gets, it gets really vicious. Half the time I'm like, you stop. It's, it's, yeah. good, it's good therapy for people like me to watch that because it kind of vent your frustrations so it's a good movie but we have to wrap up I think um, so first of all thank you so much for choosing to come thank here you guys check us out yeah. um, the award for the best defense I don't know who defended it the best but this guy slept on a concrete floor to check out J.J. Abrams you are going to get a Lego Star Wars The Phantom Menace ah. <laughs> Uh, Curtis, do you need to say anything? Um, uh, remind them that exists. Oh, the uh, movie I wrote, and Eduardo directed, exists is 1 o'clock, right? No, it starts 1 o'clock. 154. 1, 154. In 154, if anybody's interested in seeing a movie. Again, I know you had a lot of opportunities to check out a million things today, so thanks so much for coming. Yeah, so you can be a check out podcast at 3.30 oh, yeah, Ninjas vs. Monsters at 5. Curtis, this film. <laughs> Four thirty. <laughs>